So hello everyone. Uh, thank you, Sophie, for setting up this meeting, and uh, thank you all for joining today. Um, my name is Ed Robert Olini. I am an application engineer within Aurolia, and uh, I am based in Paris area in France. Um, I am specialized in the timing and synchronization products from Aurolia's positioning, navigation, and timing portfolio. Uh, during this uh, half an hour meeting, we are going to talk about the Versasync product here in picture. It's a, a ruggedized time and a frequency synchronization platform, which is ideal for mobile application. So let's talk about timing and synchronization in aviation. Nowadays, a lot of different applications are relying on timing synchronization, accurate positioning data, and resilient GNSS signals. It is vital for many critical infrastructure on the military side, but also on the commercial side. Regarding the aviation world, uh, there are more and more applications involving timing synchroni synchronization. It can be for airport surface radar, air traffic control system, weather and sensor analysis, flight instrumentation, flying test bench, communication network synchronization, intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance platform, flight analysis, and many more applications and equipment. Um, to all of this system, to all of this, uh, systems are relying on Genesis uh, on Genesis uh, on Genesis. Sorry, so global navigation satellite systems such as GPS, uh, GLONASS, Galileo, and Beidou. So Genesis constitutes a, a worldwide utility which is tightly interconnected with all other critical infrastructure and are now used in many mobile applications. Unfortunately, Genesis signals uh, are weak and susceptible to jamming or spoofing and the ability to inter interfere with these signals is easy. So there are new deficiencies and threats which were never accounted for all those years before that manifest themselves today and can, and can jeopardize data synchronization and operation. Once we are aware of those threats, we can definitely say that for critical systems on LAN or embed, uh, which rely on GNSS, these are serious issues. Um, here is just an example involving a commercial aircraft. In such an aircraft, there is a minimum of uh, 110 computers with data to synchronize. Among all the data, uh, among all the systems embed and used at the same time, we can list, for example, flight data acquisition system, shield quantity uh, indication system, power line detectors, flight data uh, and cockpit uh, voice recorder, central maintenance computer, weather radar, hair data computers, um, electronic support measure, fire detection system, avionic interfer interface devices, electronic flight um, information systems, and flight uh, test instrument instrumentation, for example. So thanks to all those data recorded and synchronized, we can learn a lot on each flight, for example, to improve the technologies, the flight routes, anticipate behavior, and also feed the automatic flight mode algorithm, for example. But can we guess what would happen if all the data provided by those computers were not synchronized? Will the data be relevant and useful for live and post-flight analysis? Uh, of course, the same uh, observations are applicable with other applications requesting accurate synchronization between uh, data acquisition units, sensors, instrument, instrument, and so on, where failure is not an option. So on the left side, uh, you can have a quick idea on how many computers with data to synchronize are embedded into fighter aircraft, helicopter, or UAV. So even uh, on this, uh, on those uh, uh, application, it's uh, critical. Oh, sorry. So all this, uh, those information led me to finally introduce you our all-in-one time and frequency solution, the VersaSync. It is a low size, weight and power, high uh, performance Genesis master clock and network time server that delivers accurate software configurable uh, time and frequency signals under, um, under hot circ circumstances, including a uh, Genesis D9 environment. Uh, its compact size and high level of regularization make the VersaSync suitable for mobile application in harsh environment. Its small foot, uh, footprint allows for easy integration of the time and frequency functionality into system architecture. And the VersaSync includes all the timing functionality required in modern network-centric application. Uh, there is uh, the NTP and the PTP precise uh, time transfer over Ethernet, including security protocols that prevent networks from uh, vulnerabilities, 
the low phase noise 10 megahertz frequency distribution um, capabilities, uh, the high configura configurable pulse signals, including, for example, IRIG or high quick time uh, codes. And we also have a serial link time, time of day uh, message. So, uh, as mentioned, this uh, unit is accurate in all conditions. Uh, it is uh, suitable for airborne, ground, or submarine application. It is uh, recognized uh, with, um, according to some military standard uh, for environmental specification. So it has been tested to the milia military standard uh, uh, 810G for the environment regarding the temperature uh, for the storage and the operating uh, and the humidity, for example, and also the vibration and shock um, test. And it has also been tested with, uh, according to the mi military standard um, 461F for the electro uh, electromechanical, no, so for the EMC test, sorry. Uh, this, um, this unit is also uh, capable uh, to work uh, up to uh, uh, 45,000 feet uh, and uh, can support a uh, very harsh uh, condition regarding the temperature. So minus uh, 40 degrees Celsius up to plus uh, 71 degrees Celsius. And it is also uh, IP65 waterproof. Uh, it's very so flexible. It is designed for reliability and easy maintenance. Uh, it allows a wide variety of analog and digital time and frequency signals. And the soft, um, all the input and uh, output for those uh, signals are software configurable only. Um, we can, uh, yeah, there are uh, network uh, capabilities, uh, and you can also set up the unit and manage the units uh, through the network. And some customized uh, uh, customization are, are available. It is really compact. It is uh, less than uh, one liter volume. Uh, it can, uh, the power consumption is uh, 110 watt, and it, uh, the weight is um, under one kilo. It is a Vita uh, 65 form factor, and um, the, the dimension here are, are really small. Um, there is a conduction cool um, platform under the unit, uh, and uh, the unit also embed the uh, mill performance uh, connectors, uh, the, the connectors below. Um, yeah. So the VersaSync uh, accommodate, can also accommodate a wide range of uh, precision oscillator, allowing the unit to maintain frequency and time accuracy for a long period of uh, GPS GNSS outage. And in addition, it can be resynchronized by an, uh, by an alternative uh, external references depending on the input and outputs you you have configured. So it makes uh, it makes the unit a highly reliable, versatile, and configurable solution. Uh, as mentioned, the physical input and outputs are software configurable and can adapt to various application requirements for mission to mission configurability. So the I/O pin here can be configured as TTL 10 volt, uh, 1 PPS, uh, RS 232 or RS 485 uh, level. Uh, this allows the VersaSync to provide a high number of output uh, of the same or different type while still fitting into a small form factor. However, if the combination uh, of software configurable output is not enough, the VersaSync can also accommodate an option board designed to customer requirements to provide additional outputs of the standard type. So the VersaSync is designed for exceptional uh, intrinsic uh, reliability uh, and comprehensive status monitoring capability, uh, either locally or remotely, uh, which allows a quick fault diagnosis. So there are physical alarm and network alarm, thanks to uh, SNMB trap, for example. Uh, can, which can be raised, uh, raised in real time. Um, it is uh, yeah, also a custom uh, solution, uh, a custom solution are available. So all you can customize the VersaSync to adapt to your specific requirement. Uh, you can uh, contact us to learn how we can efficiently design and validate a special configuration to match your needs. Uh, for example, we can uh, include fiber optic interface, a low phase noise oscillator and or micro rubidium oscillator. 
the VersaSync can also ensure continuous operation even in a GPS-D9 environment, thanks to the embed uh, GPS GNSS interference detection and mitigation software. So it is a built-in software package of anti-jamming and anti-jamming, uh, uh, anti-spoofing algorithm to detect anomalies in the GNSS signal, including unintentional uh, interferences and malicious uh, attack attacks. So uh, thanks to this uh, software, it will uh, automatically notify, alarm and disable the GNSS synchronization and switch to backup synchronization. Um, optional mitigation measures or hold over if GNSS interference is detected. So all those features combined leave the versus to be the perfect fit for a mobile environment. Uh, here it's an example with a, a UAV uh, to to underline uh, the, the, the really small uh, form factor of the unit and its uh, high uh, versatility. Oh, sorry. Uh, here on this page um, are some addition related example where we can find the Versacing product. So uh, the unit uh, can be uh, found in a surve surveillance radar, uh, static or mobile uh, radars. Uh, uh, also, for the UAV sensor payload to synchronize, for example, the embed uh, radar, electronic warfare, map making, and thermal or infrared imaging equipment, or geo referencing, for example. Uh, it can be also found in the test and telemetry uh, on a flying test bench to synchronize flight test uh, instrumentation data, data acquisition units, recorder, transmitter, receiver, for example. Uh, it can also be found in uh, the airborne sensor data links for uh, ISR, uh, for intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, to synchronize um, radars, uh, electro-optical cameras, thermal or infrared sensor, for example, uh, but also in communication, such as airborne communication relay, transmitters to a ground antenna, and so on. Uh, also, uh, on the SATCOM side, for cerebral SATCOM antennas or mobile uh, SATCOM terminal, for example, uh, in the da uh, on in data networks on ground, but also on board, thanks to the network capabilities allowed by the units. Uh, but we have also other applications uh, I did not mention here, such as a uh, high aerial atmospheric atmospheric uh, monitoring to synchronize uh, onboard sensor, and many other use cases are also related to naval uh, automotive or ter terrestrial application. So all this application versatility is possible thanks to the versatility itself of the unit. Uh, here is the front panel of the unit. Uh, we can see different connectors from different type. The connectors above as written as the connector for the GNSS antenna input uh, for the one on the top left. Um, um, uh, the other SMA connectors are the 10 MHz output connector. And below we will find the military grade connectors for the power, the multi-IO, um, the internet, and the uh, IO special uh, for SASM use. So this, uh, the last one is not uh, on the basic configuration of the units, uh, as it is uh, only for military use. So as explained previously, the Versasync physical inputs and outputs are software configurable. Uh, this allows you to easily change the configuration used during one week test, for example, to a totally different configuration involving new inputs and outputs without changing um, the unit for your incoming week of test. So once the unit is connected uh, to Ethernet through the Ethernet connectors, you can have access to the uh, web user interface I am going to show you right after. Uh, please, note that, please note that this internet connector provides two 1 gigabit internet uh, network connection using eight wires, but it is also possible to connect uh, to, to wire your connector to uh, 100 megabytes Ethernet uh, using only four wires. Uh, so it is under the web user interface that you will be able to configure the, eight, eight, the, sorry, the 26 pin uh, input uh, output connectors and uh, on the 26 uh, pins, uh, eight are de dedicated to USB. So it is very useful if you want to connect uh, to the unit via serial port connection to carry out uh, certain uh, configuration changes by accessing the same command line interface. Uh, and on the right side, I put the table, which is uh, in our data sheet regarding all the timing signals available for, for, for VersaSync. So thanks to the multi IO connector, 
you will be able to configure one PPS, um, one PPS, IREC DCLS or IREC IM signals, half quick signals, and also ASCII signals on different types such as DCLS, TTL, RS-232 or RS-485 level, for example. And you can also, uh, through the Web UI, configure the Ethernet ports to use the NTP or PTP uh, capabilities. Uh, to help you to better understand uh, what is uh, the, this multi uh, uh, IO uh, connector uh, you're capable of, we created uh, an interactive um, IO configurator um, available on our free to access user online web uh, manual. Sorry. Uh, so you have the link here uh, to have access to this uh, configuration tool. Uh, here, each channel can serve as uh, only one interface. And not all combinations are possible due to the internal multiplexer architecture. So you can use the inter interactive IO switch matrix to design your IO uh, configuration by dragging any signal type from the left uh, hand column to one of the highlighted fields. Uh, it is very useful to see what uh, the unit is capable of. So here I, uh, I provided you an example of a configuration, but uh, I can reset this configuration here. And, uh, and choose a, a totally different uh, configuration on the signal output uh, and the pins used uh, to, to output or to input the signals. Um, so that's it for the February. Uh, now we are going to move on the, on the, the live demo. So I'm going to connect to uh, VersaSync uh, remotely. Uh, I hope you will be able to see my screen. Uh, Sophie will uh, tell me once uh, you see the the VersaSync web user interface. You can see it now. OK. Uh, perhaps it's a little bit uh, smaller. I hope you will be uh, able to, to read. Uh, so this is a web user interface when you log on uh, to the unit. So we can see here on the home page the different references available in the reference status here. So the G here we can see that the GNSS reference is valid and selected but we can see other references that are, that are listed uh, in order of priority, meaning that uh, if something goes wrong with the GNSS reference, the system will choose the next valid reference in the list. Uh, in case we don't have any other valid reference, uh, that is when, we, when the unit will go into what we call holdover and runs uh, on its own internal clock using the historical performances to try to keep the timing as accurate as possible. So in our case, we have uh, the GNSS input uh, set as priority one, and then we have uh, another IREC input coming from uh, another equipment providing uh, uh, an IREC signal. Uh, it is uh, valid, but we can see other, um, other priority which are not valid. Uh, we can have access to the referenced uh, uh, priority table by clicking on, the, on this uh, toothed wheel. And here we have access to the different um, uh, priority, uh, the different reference. So we can have up to uh, 15 uh, references and uh, each, uh, each uh, with uh, its priority order. So if, I, for example, I uh, disable the GNSF reference and I submit this uh, modification, you will see that the unit will now jump to the second reference valid available. Uh, so in our case, the IREG um, reference. So let's go back on the home menu. Uh, up. So now in the, on the left side, we can see in the system status that the, the reference used to discipline the internal oscillator is no longer the GNSS, uh, the GNSS uh, reference, but it is now the IREG reference. And we can see here in the performance uh, tab, tab that the, the disciplining state of the oscillator is, is, uh, is uh, not locked yet, is, uh, it's, it's tracking the setup. So the modification uh, was taken into account thank, uh, thanks to the, the VASA sync. If we go in the interface menu, uh, we have access to uh, so the different reference set on the unit. Uh, we have access to all the different output uh, set on the unit also. And we have access to, uh, here is uh, the combination of the input and the output. So if I go, for example, in the reference menu, we'll uh, we will be able to have a, 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 the status of each reference. So for example, even if uh, we uh, disable the GNSS status, uh, we, the units still uh, see the, 
the reference as valid, and we can have more information on, uh, by clicking on the information of this uh, menu. So for example, we can see that uh, our unit is using a U-Box uh, MAT receiver, uh, and currently uh, here is the position uh, receiving by the unit from the, uh, the antenna in our roof, uh, in our office in Paris. And here are the constellations used by our units uh, for now. Uh, we can uh, uh, decide to modify and just use GPS or just uh, uh, Galileo. It's, uh, it's uh, user dependent. And uh, we can also have information on uh, the satellite data, so we can have uh, uh, an historic of the number of static uh, tracked uh, during the, the last days, for example. And also you have information on the signal to noise ratio uh, for each satellite. Uh, if I want to have information on the other reference valid uh, on my unit, I can do the same. I can click on the information of the units which is set and I have some information. So for example, on the iRig, um, and the iRig input, here are the information I have. Uh, we are receiving iRig jack signals uh, in DCLS with, uh, with uh, those parameters. Uh, if I modify this input, uh, uh, we will see that uh, it won't be valid any, anymore because the, the other equipment which is set to provide iRig G uh, will not uh, change uh, its output. And then uh, for now, we don't have many outputs configured, uh, and we will see uh, like that we can easily configure much much more outputs. So here we just have a rig um, output, a rig B001 output, and we have the 10 megahertz output uh, from the, the top uh, connectors. To, to modify the, those input and output, we saw that we can uh, modify the by the software under the web user interface. Uh, the the multiple IO uh, connector, so it is in the under the management menu, and in the pin layout uh, menu. So here we are in the pin layout menu. So we have uh, the possibility to configure uh, which signal we want on uh, on which pin according to the um, to the switch matrix I show you, uh, uh, which is available in our online user manual. So for example, if I want to add a new signal on pins which are not used, I can select the, the signal I want. So I can be a, a high rig out, I can be a quick out, um, uh, ASCII, ASCII signals, uh, depending on what uh, I want. So let's take a PPS out DCLS 10 volt, for example. So here are the, here are the, the only pins available for this uh, kind of signal. So let's uh, choose this one, submit. And now we will see that the, the, the pin layout is, uh, is updated with the, the new input I, I, I set. And we can uh, decide to uh, set another one. Uh, let's use, I don't know, um, um, have quick out on uh, pins. Uh, this one are not used yet, so we can use yeah, 13 and 14, submit. And here we have a, uh, uh, the half quick out which is set you can apply those changes and uh, now once uh, the changes are applied we'll go back uh, in the interface menu and uh, and check that the those uh, those uh, modification were were made up now we can see in the interface, I don't know if you can read, we can see in the interface that we have more output than before. Uh, so we have the half quick output reset and also the PPS output. So I won't go through all the example po possible because uh, there are lots of uh, example possible, but here you can see that only with the software you can quickly configure the, this multiple uh, IO uh, port connector uh, according to uh, the test you want to perform. and. Uh, can save this configuration and use it later uh, because you can save it through, um, on your uh, on your laptop and uh, upload it later. So if you have uh, several tests uh, you want to to save, you can uh, easily uh, recover uh, uh, a previous um, layout layout and uh, and uh, perform uh, other tests. So this is very very helpful. Um, so this is it for the versatility of the of the VersaSync. 
Uh, then we can, I uh, won't go through all the menu, but uh, we have lots of uh, network as, um, network settings uh, available also uh, on the management uh, menu, such as uh, the NTP and the PTP setup, and also the SNMP setup, the, all the security, uh, all the sec cyber security uh, settings uh, for the units. And, um, uh, so everything is uh, is configurable through this, uh, this uh, web user interface. Uh, then we can also uh, um, have access to all the authentication um, uh, settings for uh, to create account if you want with uh, with uh, different list of access, and uh, you can also have uh, um, the the settings for to to configure the the log uh, available in the unit and many other settings uh, which are proper to the, this uh, this product. Under the tool, uh, uh, we have uh, two family, the system and the log. So on the log family, it's all the log available um, in the units. And uh, under the system, uh, under the system, uh, it's all the information interesting uh, for the system. So we have some uh, monitor uh, capabilities, but also some upgrade and backup capability for the system. And this is also where you can uh, uh, install a license for a specific feature, for example. On the top left, uh, on, the, on the on the bottom left, we have uh, the what we what is written Broadshield. It's uh, our IGM software. Um, so as mentioned, it is a set of uh, detection algorithm for jamming and spoofing. Uh, it's used over uh, 75 algorithm, uh, ch checking different parts of the signal, uh, different characteristic of the signal uh, of the GPS signal in order to detect whether jamming or spoofing is present. So in this case, it is embedded in the VersaSync software, and uh, the IGM just does the detection and it notifies the VersaSync of that detection, uh, and then the VersaSync uh, invalidates uh, that compromised GNSS reference. So the graph on the top, uh, we can see the system state. Uh, this graph represents the cumulative, the cumulative penal penalty score for jamming and spoofing. And uh, the red line uh, in the middle is a critical line. So when jamming or spoofing scores breached this line, the item software considers the environment jammed or spoofed. And uh, in the banner at the top of the dashboard, uh, it will turn yellow uh, for jamming or, or red for spoofing. So we can differentiate between jamming and spoofing by looking at the color of the line uh, that we have here. So right now, we don't have any uh, jamming or spoofing. Um, but there are some events that can occur during the day that will trigger some of the algorithm, and you might see a little spike, but uh, as long as uh, this is within the normal range, everything is still fine. Um, that's why we really use a scoring system where it has to be multiple things that are filling the algorithm, or one thing that waves very highly so that the line goes above the critical line, and that's when jamming or spoofing will be detected. Uh, all graph uh, at the bottom, sorry, uh, is uh, the GNSS spectrum. So this is a, a 8 MHz wide representative spectrum centered around the GPS L1 frequency. This is not a raw error spectrum. Uh, this spectrum is just rep representative based on the output of the receiver, and it is not um, a spectrum analyzer. So you can see some spike, some spike, but uh, it is just the way the data are interpreted. interpreted interpreted, sorry, and you can't measure power with this spectrum, but you can see the type of waveform present if it is strong enough. Uh, all graph can be viewed uh, in a variety of time window by clicking on the tab on the tabs under the dashboard banner. So for example, here is the what the history of the last hour, the three hours, the six last hour, the 12 to, uh, last hour, the, the last day. This, uh, so yeah, here is a very important spike, a blue spike. Uh, I, I did some uh, jamming um, test uh, with another equipment. And here's the history for three days and seven days. Um, I think we are running out of time. Um, I, uh, uh, I won't go through all the, the menu of the, this feature, but yeah, this feature is also uh, embedded to the VersaSync and is very, uh, very useful if you are sensitive to, to jamming and spoofing uh, and you are and you need uh, accurate um, um, accurate uh, information and synchronization, it is good to know uh, what is happening around you uh, regarding the GNSS signals. Um, I can go back on uh, my presentation. 
So uh, yeah, here's the here was the the, the last thing like demo. Of course, we if you have uh, if you have uh, any question, uh, we will be uh, very uh, pleased to to answer. And uh, you can also request a, a personal demo if you need, uh, or for a uh, private meeting. Uh, we will be happy to to support you on uh, on uh, on this product. Uh, yes, uh, Sophie. I don't know if you want to to take the. the yep. Sorry. So yeah, uh, we are going to, to wrap this up as you mentioned. Um, so we still have two webinars to go. One this afternoon with uh, Alain Boué presenting the return link system from Galileo. And tomorrow will be the last one with uh, John Fisher introducing the mini Rubidium oscillator or the SpectraTime MRO from Morulia. Um, it can go on the next slide. We also have the Virtual Boost is still live. Um, as you know, we have a main focus on commercial aviation, but we also have combat search and rescue beacons for military use and an innovation corner demonstrating uh, timing synchronization items such as the versusing that Edward just introduced to you. Uh, also with some testing and simulation items that you can discover by checking out our booths. Uh, so don't hesitate to request a meeting, request an online demo as Edward mentioned or register to the rest of the webinar sessions that we have, and we'll be delighted to have you on. Thank you all for attending and have a very good day.